My name is Larry Wood. I worked at Hot Wheels for 40 years and I'm still doing consultant work for the last five, so I've been there quite a few years. We're here at Elwood's Garage and it's where I work on my cars all the time. Got Hot Wheels, got real cars, got everything. I started Hot Wheels in 69 and uh, at the time it was a fairly small business at Mattel. Barbie, of course, was the number one. Uh, so Hot Wheels through the years started growing a little bit and a little bit. I was there 15 years all by myself. And uh, finally, all of a sudden, when the kids who grew up wanted to get toys for their sons, they just remembered Hot Wheels. So they went back and Hot Wheels exploded. My story about Hot Wheels and cars in general starts when I was a kid. My dad was a football coach. And one day he found one of his uh, students reading a car magazine instead of doing his football practice or whatever it was. So he brought the car magazine home. It was a, one of the small uh, rod and customs or whatever it was at the time and threw it on the counter and just, you know, he was, just wanted to get rid of it. Well, I read that thing from top to bottom. That was, changed my life. During the summer, I, our route was on the way to the beach and all the rich people would drive by in their new 50s cars going to the beach. And I would sit on the side of the road and just watch the 59 Caddies and the 56 Ford Crown Vicks and the, the colors and everything from the 50s and the cars going by. And that was what I did during the summer for fun. In high school, I was the guy that drew everybody's cool car or what their car wanted to be. I once got an interview where they asked me, what did you think of high school? And the only thing I remember about high school is the math paper didn't have lines, so I could draw cars on the math paper. I didn't do too good in high school, but the passion of, of being able to sketch and, and draw a car, which I had an idea, and again, reading the car magazines about how customs were made, I mean, George Barris, how he did his cars and everything. I said, man, I'd love to do that for a living. I opened up a magazine one day and I was, I, I think it was Motor Trend or something, but it had an article about Art Center in Los Angeles. And it said, learn to draw cars. Well, I've been drawing cars for all my buddies all these years. So I, I called my mom and said, okay, I guess I should go to college. And so we put together a little portfolio and I sent it to Art Center and lo and behold, I got accepted, which was a real shock. It was the first time somebody actually graded me on drawing something. It changed my life completely. So that's what got me going and I ended up in Detroit at Ford. During Ford, we all owned Corvettes and we, owned a, we had a club called Kofamoko. Corvette owners of Ford Motor Car Company. So that was, it was fun. We always told them if you build something that would beat it, would buy it. So Detroit was great, got to do cars, had a great time. Uh, the politics and the, and the snow was just a bit much. And when my buddies started coming back to California, I realized that I wanted to come back to California. I went to a party. A friend of mine invited me to a party down here in the South Bay. And I came down and the party was going on. I looked out and his kids were playing with this orange track that had a, a loop in it. And these little cars were going through this orange track. And I said, hey, that's pretty cool. What's that? And he says, well, I design Hot Wheels. And he says, I, but I don't like doing it. He wasn't a car nut. He, was, he just did it as a job. He says, I, I want to do Matt Mason. I want to do space and all that. And I said, I'll tell you what, you get me a job there. I'll do the cars. You go on and do your Matt Mason thing. And it worked out. I ended up uh, being interviewed and, and I walked in and first day I got to do a whole car. And I've been there ever since. And it's just been the greatest job drawing cars and, and building whatever car you wanted to build. When we were designing cars, we would take pictures out of Hot Rod and all the other magazines and put them on the walls and say, are we going to do this car or that car? And that's the fun part. You get to do the car you really want, the latest car, me. I do the hot rods, of course, hot rods and customs. Probably the two of my best are the one we call the Purple Passion, which was a Chop 49 Merc, the usual stuff, uh, you know, skirts and, and lowered with DeSoto grill and everything. Became very popular. But just before I left, at the very end, I did a car called the uh, Bone Shaker. And I was trying to come up with it. I was doing a T rat rod and I was trying to figure out how to make it kind of cool. Instead of a Model T grill, I put a skull on the front with a couple of hands holding the headlights. And I thought, hey, this is a good gimmick. And so we called it uh, uh, the Bone Shaker. And that thing has been so popular. The part I liked about Hot Wheels was that I got to do a car, the car I liked, but also the detail. When I pick up a Hot Wheel and I flip it over, I want the chassis to be right. I want the oil pan to be right. I want the exhaust system to be right. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I'd enjoy. Kids may not know the difference, but if you're a car guy, you know the difference. Through the years, we did different scales too. When you start doing a, a larger scale, I did the Batmobile. And boy, you talk about the detail in the Batmobile. We actually scanned the whole car. If you look close, it's got braided lines with AN fittings on the end, and it's got the right turbines in it and everything, and the fuel pumps and all this stuff. 
stuff. So that's the kind of stuff you could really get into. It's surprising how many themes on a hot rod you can come up with because here we are 45 years later and we're still taking, making 32 Fords with different engines in them or something like that. And so the hot rod theme, as far as I'm concerned, was the thing to keep Hot Wheels going. In all my life, I always liked big cars, the Duesenbergs and Packards, you know, cars like that. But I couldn't afford those kind of cars. So one day I was looking through Hemmings magazines and I saw a little ad for uh, a 1932 Nash. It was sitting in a field in Texas in a barn. So I got a car and a trailer and I went back and that was a big car. We had to get a tow truck to tow it out of the mud, and drag it across the field. So I got it back to California, tore it completely apart, uh, spent about a year, year and a half. I even had to replace the wood in the body because it had been sitting in a stream at one time and the wood was rotten. I was doing a wedding and I dropped the people off and I drove around the corner and there was a freeway on-ramp right ahead of me and I was heading towards the freeway on-ramp and the front axle broke and ripped the fender and the fend and the wheel off. Luckily I was going 30 miles an hour instead of 75. Well this time I tore it all completely apart again and started all over. Did it in a brighter collar. I actually had some custom wire wheels made for it, chrome. The originals were painted. Uh, those were a real bear to make. And this time I put a 454 Chevy in it, which I gotta tell you, I like the 390 AMC motor better, but it's, it's got a Chevy in it, so that's what counts. I worked at Hot Wheels for 40 years, and it was getting to the point where uh, everything was becoming digital, which is very efficient, and it does a fantastic job, no two ways about it. But I like the feel of a pen or a pencil on paper, and I like the look of the pattern and being able to change little things here and there. So it was, it was, time for other people to take over. So I decided that it was time to play with my own cars. When this garage came up, it was just one of those things that was a combination of luck of finding it and financially being able to finally afford it. I can make noise, I can grind, I can weld back in the corner. I got two hands, I can build anything. Then I had this bright idea when I retired that I had to have something to do to keep me busy. I had to get up in the morning and I had to go to work or else I'd go crazy. So I started on this new project and I wanted to build a truck and trailer to tow and go on, on vacation and stuff. So I built a 38 Ford cab over truck. I had to lengthen the body because they were so short back then with my long legs, I couldn't fit in it. And then I had to narrow the sleeper and I handmade the bed. Uh, basically everything on the truck was handmade and it was just a great project, I really enjoyed doing it. So after that I, had, I found a trailer and I found the trailer out in Michigan and had it brought back cross country and it was junk. So I stripped the trailer, completely gutted it absolutely nothing in it. I had to redo some of the outside aluminum. But the inside, I'm not a woodworker, but I thought, hey, a guy did it 50 years ago, I'll do it now. So I got a saw and I started cutting the pieces of wood and everything in that trailer started off as a two by four. And I cut them down to the right thickness and, and I learned how to do it. And, and it's the way I feel. If you've got two hands, you can build anything. After I got the trailer done, got a little bored, and I bought a 57 Ford wagon. I always like those. It's got a 460 in it, so the mechanical stuff's done. There's a lot of little things I have to do on it. But I'm acting like I'm a designer in 1955 at Ford, and Chevy just came out with the Nomad. And oh, geez, what a nice looking wagon. I'm going to design this wagon to take on the Chevy Nomad, which Ford never did. They didn't really do a deluxe wagon. So I'm going to take it with the Crown Vic uh, stainless over the top. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm thinking of a woody theme. I'm going to do wood inside and some wood down the side. You know, lower it with a set of wheels on it and everything. But basically, I want to build this like, like a, I wouldn't call it a rat rod, but a car that you got to use your hands. You can't buy billet. You have to just buy the, get the parts or go to junkyards. I've, ever, I've already started going back to junkyards and getting parts for it. Elwood's Garage came because when I sell, sign my artwork, if you ever see my artwork anywhere, it's always signed L. Wood, Larry Wood, L. Wood. And I've always had nicknames all my life. And when it came time to put a sign up down here, L. Wood was a shorter, it fits, and it works great on graphics and everything. So that's kind of where the Elwood's Garage came from. Through the years, I've gotten as I've gone along, you know, got to do the Hot Wheels, got to do the real cars, got my garage. I've gotten, I've been lucky. I've been, things have wor really worked out uh, pretty good for me. In fact, Mattel once had a, uh, a brainstorm session and we were supposed to do a chart of how our life went on and off, on and off, you know, things we did and everything. And I said, mine is easy. 15 years old, I found cars. I went here and I'm happy ever since. <laughs>